A message left for me, is life just a game? Know the fact that no one can deny, yet nearly 90% of people ignore. Know the fact that no one can deny, yet nearly 90% of people ignore. People have many disagreements in this life. Disagreements in nearly all matters that you can think of. Yet, one of the facts that no one can deny is the same fact that most ignore. This makes you wonder, why do people ignore such a critical fact in our lives? And are you conscious and preparing for what's coming? Or are you one of those people that don't like to think of that fact? But what is this fact that I am talking about? It's death. The simple fact that we are all going to die one day. No one can deny this fact, right? Yet, as I told you, many just ignore it and live this life as if there was no such thing as death, as if this life would last forever. And even if they don't think that it would be forever, they think it would be for a hundred years or even more. But the fact is simply that you and I don't know whether we are actually going to live to see tomorrow or not. Tomorrow is coming and so near, yet we don't really know if we are still going to be in this life when it comes or would our time arrive before tomorrow arrives. We spend our lives looking too much into the future as if we own it and as if it's granted to come. We spend our lives thinking that the only thing that is coming tomorrow is just another day, forgetting the simple fact that this life is a limited temporary life. It doesn't matter if death reached any of us after a hundred years, a year, tomorrow, or even this night, the fact remains that this life will end. What should be the impact of death on your life? As we're all looking and preparing for what is coming, preparing for the exam that we may have after months from now, preparing for deadlines to be met, we should also prepare for our own deadline. We should search and look objectively at what is around us, know what this life actually means, what is it that we are supposed to do in it, and where would we end up when we die. Ignoring death and saying that nothing will happen after it and saying that this life is meaningless is in itself meaningless. The fact is that death is coming, and when it does it doesn't matter what we'll tell ourselves to sedate our minds and not think about it. What will matter is the reality. So we need to be aware of it from now on and be prepared for it. Searching and looking for what the meaning behind all this is, what makes sense and what doesn't, and what we should actually be doing in our lives. Because death is coming, whether we liked it or not. And what will happen after it will happen whether we liked it or not. Prepare now to avoid regretting later. The thought of death shouldn't be something that causes anxiety. Remembering what is coming should make us remember the reality of this life and accomplish more in it before it ends. If the thought of death is bothering, then use it as a motive to do more to search and know what all this is about and achieve more in it. Don't run away from it, because facts remain facts, whether you liked it or not. Remember the breaker of pleasures. Let me tell you what I think about death. Death isn't the end my friend and the one who brought us to this life can easily bring us back again. The one who created all of this can easily make it once again. And it is he who can tell us whether it would happen or not, it is he who can make us know what the purpose from this life is and what should we do in it. It is he who can tell us where we are heading and what would happen to us after death. Many humans claimed many things about it, and some make their own answers up simply to relieve their minds from thinking about it. But the truth remains that we can't just make things up and expect them to replace the truth. We need to search and actually know. We need to look into the evidence and not reject any of it just because we don't like it. What we like should follow the truth because when the time comes what would matter is the reality, but not necessarily what we like. The one who created you gifted you with a mind and with intellect so that you can search and realize the truth, so that you can recognize your purpose and what you should do. And distinguish that from false claims. The truth became a cliché because everyone just took it as a matter of fun, but the reality is that truth in the existential matters is the thing that we all need the most. I believe in what I do because it resonates with common sense and the truth within all of us. I know it because of the many pieces of evidence proving it and I thank the Creator for giving us the answers we need for such critical questions and making them clear. I thank Him because He gave us the ability to distinguish the truth. I don't call for play, however, I invite you to check by yourself. See the evidence that anyone with common sense shall accept, and find the answer that you need. Look into Islam and its evidence and you will find the answers you need. And make sure to cling to it when you find it. The truth deserves it. Remember the breaker of pleasures. Don't let your own desires trick you and actually know where are you heading before time runs out. A message left for me. Just like any other day, I woke up early in a hurry trying to catch the bus. I reached work just on time. Then, I started the eight boring hours, working and working. I woke up again, in a hurry I dressed up. Then, I ran to catch the bus, I arrived at work just on time, woo. And as usual, I started the eight despicable working hours. Once, I woke up. But everything stayed asleep. I did not dress up, nor did I go to work. It was a different day. I thought my life was running right in front of me, but I couldn't catch it or slow it down a little bit. I even typed in the fastest way I could to catch what was left for my life, when I knew that it was not much. 
I spent days and days running in an endless loop, trying to keep myself balanced in an unbalanced world, where the essential meaning of life is kept hidden. As, no one will ever tell you about it unless you start looking for. I started looking minutes ago, just before I started typing this article. I looked back at all those happy moments and they were not much, I looked back at those worry moments and they were numerous, and there is no need to talk about those sad, stressed and miserable ones. I realize that I have been running in the wrong direction, I've been swimming towards the same bad feelings I used to run from. Life became meaningless. Moreover, what worried me the most is that I'm going to die at any moment and all of what I left behind is nothing. One day I will not wake up again. I will not work eight hours. Even, I will not go to work anymore. That day is where I end everything that attaches me to this life, this scary day ends everything in glimpse. On this day, I will take nothing with me. Absolutely nothing except for belief and my good deeds. And thanks Allah, is to root to breathe as I remembered the word belief, a word that lives inside you, and a word that keeps your soul alive, but you have chosen to bury it beneath the life. How miserable I am to forget such blessing. Belief is a bless that shall keep our tongues busy with thanking and praising Allah forever, Alhamdulillah. As Allah says. The day he will assemble you for the day of assembly, that is the day of deprivation. And whoever believes in Allah and does righteousness, he will remove from him his misdeeds and admit him to gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide forever. That is the great attainment. Quran.com 64.9 Remember, O Messenger, the day when Allah will gather you on the day of judgment to give you the recompense for your actions. That is the day when the loss of the disbelievers will become clear, as the believers will inherit the homes of the people of the fire in paradise. And the people of the fire will inherit the homes of the people of paradise in the fire. Those who have faith in Allah and do righteous deeds, Allah will remit their sins from them and enter them into gardens, under the palaces and trees of which rivers flow. To live in them forever and never to come out, the bliss of which will not end. That which they attained is the great success, which no other success can come close to. Tagabun, 9 After all I still have a chance, it is neither about the work nor the kids. Also, it is not about how fancy your life is. It is always about every step you take towards Allah. Actually, it is how much good deeds you left behind. It is all about the journey towards the heaven. Briefly, it is about how to enjoy the peaceful life when it is full of worships and belief. Is life just a game? Dale Carnegie, a writer and lecturer, who wrote the best nine books among them is. How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, in which he settled down rules to get rid of worries and tools to communicate with people effectively, has killed himself after he suffered from depression. Robin Williams, the smile maker actor, killed himself after he suffered from loneliness and depression. Marilyn Monroe, the American myth actress, who has become a symbol in the American cinema, has suffered from severe depression and drug abuse issues. Ended up with hysteria until now it's not yet known whether she killed herself or have been killed. But looking at the amount of fame, wealth and beauty she had, it leaves us with the question. But why? There are so many examples of those people around each one of us in real life, or even it may be you who is reading this article now. Lost, tired and depressed. A lot of people achieve a lot in their lives yet, they don't find happiness. And ironically they may end it up all up by their own hands, because they don't know what's the point of it all. What life is all about. Once they reach the goal they have set for themselves everything afterwards seems pointless, even life itself. Have you ever thought what the point of life is? What's the point of this universe? The skies, the oceans, the mountains, the animals, and even insects. After I get married and have kids and earn wealth, then what? After I achieve the goals I have set for myself, then what? Why am I so hollow from inside? Why is it that I don't understand a lot of what's happening to me or to others who suffer? Well, the answer is simple, Allah says clarifying the reason of creation. And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. Quran.com 5156 and I did not create jinns and men except for my worship alone. I did not create them to make a partner for me. I do not want any provision off them nor do I want them to feed me. Allah is the provider for his servants, all of them are in need of his provision, he is the supreme lord, every mighty, nothing is outside his ability. All of the jinns and men submit to his power, may he be glorified. Adds Zariayat, 56-58 Also And we did not create the heaven and earth and that between them in play. Had we intended to take a diversion, we could have taken it from, what is, with us, if, indeed, we were to do so. Rather, we dash the truth upon falsehood, and it destroys it, and thereupon it departs. And for you is destruction from that which you describe. Quran.com 21.16-18 And I did not create the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between as a plaything or in vain, but rather I created them to show my power. 
If I wanted to take a wife or child, I would have done so on my own part. But I did not do this as I am pure of this. But rather, I throw the truth I reveal to my messengers upon the falsehood of the disbelievers, and it destroys it, and then their falsehood goes and finishes. And for you, O you who say Allah has taken a wife or son, is destruction, due to your describing him with what is inappropriate for him. al anbiya 16-18 Also God said, O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. Quran.com 4913 O people! Indeed, I have created you from one male, your father Adam, and one female, your mother Eve. Therefore, your lineage is the same, so some of you should not take pride in lineage over others. Then, I made you into many nations and dispersed tribes, so that you may recognize one another, not so that you take pride in them, because pride can only be due to Allah consciousness. Indeed, the most noble from among you according to Allah is the one who is most mindful of him. Indeed, Allah is aware of your conditions, knowing of what levels of perfection and deficiency you are on, nothing is hidden from him. al hujurat 13 He the Almighty said that this life is a test provided with trials to see how we will respond to it. Allah the Almighty said. Every soul will taste death. And we test you with evil and with good as trial, and to us you will be returned. Quran.com 2135 Every believing and disbelieving soul will taste death in the world. And I test you, O mankind, in the worldly life through duties, blessings and hardships, then after your death you shall be returned to me alone and nobody else. Then I shall reward you for your deeds. al 35 And thus, you will find that the believer is the happiest person on earth, knowing that there's a hereafter in which he will be rewarded for every good he did, every trial he was patient with, and every forbidden act he avoided. The believer sees blessings and learns lessons from every hardship he passes through, because he does that out of faith. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said. Wondrous is the affair of the believer for there is good for him in every matter and this is not the case with anyone except the believer. If he is happy, then he thanks Allah and thus there is good for him, and if he is harmed, then he shows patience and thus there is good for him. Sahih Muslim. And he, peace be upon him, also said. The servant will continue to be tried until he is left walking upon the earth without any sin. Sunan at -Tirmidhi. Taking these prophet sayings and many other Muslim scholars talking about how blessed is that who is tested with trials in this life into consideration. Hardly makes any true believer go through depressions or sadness. A believer's goals are clear. He learns from each step he takes in his life. Nothing stops him from going forward and achieving. And yet, his life isn't superficially materialistic. Search for your goals yourself, close your eyes and see yourself achieve it, how will you be feeling? And what will be next? If you didn't find a reasonable answer, then maybe you may find your answer in the Quran. He made this worldly life a home of tests in which if one fails, disbelieve in him and disobey his commands, one will enter hellfire, and if one passes, believe in him and obey his commands. One will enter paradise. He sent messengers and divine books for that purpose. And for that he created the heavens and the earth.